It's day four on the Golden Oldies Snooker Trail here in Goodwood House. The legends enjoying all their former glory. Enjoying it in particular, the former world champions Dennis Taylor, Joe Johnson and Ray Reardon because they've already made the quarterfinals. And today we've got a man who turned professional, are you ready for this, 46 years ago, 1951, Rex Williams, known as the gentleman of the game. I've got a feeling he invented that title. But Rex today is playing a man we ask you to try and guess the identity of in our last program. Twice winner of the original Pop Black. Yes, of course, Graham Miles. Hello, um, I, I'm Graham Miles, yeah? Okay, cheers. If one man was made by Pop Black, it was surely Birmingham's Graham Miles. He won it in spectacular fashion the first year he took part to become one of the faces of TV snooker. Now he has to pull one right out of the bag. And it's in. And my word, the final of the 1974 Pop Black series goes to a young man, 34-year-old Graham Marshall Brown. And what about that as a finish? A fantastic climax to the pop back 1974 with the Birmingham player unknown 12 months ago. Now, up till then, I'd been sort of nothing really in the sense of the word as a, as a snooker player, but overnight I became a little bit of an international star because I'd, I, I won it at my first attempt. Everybody thought I was world champion. It was great. It was marvellous. Absolutely simple. In 1974, the year he first won Pop Black, Graham also reached his only world final. Against him, Reardon in his prime, and Miles managed to get only one hand on the trophy. Well, I've always been classified as uh, sort of laid back and. Uh, that's probably my uh, downfall, I suppose, really. Uh, should have practised a little bit more, took more care of myself. I could have done better, I, I, I feel. But he's missed that one. You could say there's a touch of the eccentric in Graham. His cue action would support the claim. I remember when Joe Davis first seen him for the first time, he says, he says if Graham ever gets a splinter in his cue, he said he'll cut his throat. <laughs> But, uh, and Ray Reardon used to say that Graham had got special eye drops for putting in his left ear. He was also bold enough, or perhaps there's another word for it, to argue with Alex Higgins after some checks had been presented. But there's a gallon bottle of uh, whiskey involved. And Alex is sitting in saying, I'll play here for it. And all this is saying, this, chap, this chap's trying to close off. So I've said to Alex, shut your mouth, be quiet. I'm saying this behind this chap's back, and Alex is saying behind his back again, I'll oh, play you all, and I've gone, to, I've gone to hit him, you see. The following day, there was a character in the, in, the, in the daily papers, and two little chaps in the corner, like Muppets, and the one says to the other one, he says, that's a sign of a good player. Always chalks his cue before batting it over his opponent's head. Did you get that? <laughs> Hello, I'm Rex Williams. I won the Boys' Championship 50 years ago. I haven't changed at all. Well, Rex had chosen a bad time to set out on his career. It was in the 1950s, when, to be honest, the game was at a pretty low ebb. I remember Joe Davis saying to me, he said, Rex, he said, the game is finished. He said, uh, uh, you may as well go into your father's business. Well, of course, I was too uh, sort of uh, in, too much in love with the game to do that. And I continued on uh, playing, playing exhibitions. And um, the World Championship um, uh, became uh, dormant, and 1957, John Pullman won it for the last time. Thanks in many ways to the efforts of Rex, the championship was back again in 1969. And in 72, Rex found himself in the final against Alex Higgins, who was taking the game by storm. And Rex vividly remembers missing an earlier blue, which cost him the title by one frame. I'd knock it in nine times out of ten. And, uh, but, of course, it's great pressure. I'm under great pressure. 
and um, I missed it and um, Alex went in and he didn't win the frame from there but he put me in a, a, a superb snooker I think on the blue pink and black and, and, and then he won it and he said to me many many years afterwards and he said have you ever thought Rex he said the way that blue he said changed our careers and of course I don't think he changed my career but it certainly changed his what should have been his best years uh, were spent uh, in the wilderness just practicing and playing uh, club exhibitions and uh, I think it shows uh, what a, a good player uh, he, he was that he actually came through uh, as an older man in fact uh, he was 53 when he got to the Grand Prix final uh, at Reading. Well, this is my uh, first uh, final in a major tournament in the modern era, and that's particularly pleasing for me. My last uh, really big match was the semi-final of the World Snooker Championship in 1974, and um, it's nice to be uh, playing as well as again, again as I was about 20 years ago. Well, the old tactician tried everything. He was up against another young hero, Jimmy White. In the end, defeat with dignity. I led Jimmy 5-2 um, in the afternoon session, and, uh, but I'm, I, he played uh, absolutely superbly in the evening, and there's nothing I can do about it. Is the Vicky uh, straight, or...? Flies done up. And we're ready. Today's top of the bill, the Midlands Derby, Miles versus Williams. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Uh, could we have some powder up here? <laughs> any any makeup? <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The first frame. Graham Miles to bed. These two players contested a semi-final in the 1974 World Championship. Neither of them looks a day younger, but it's nice to see them both looking so well. Yes, this week full of nostalgia. At the table there, Rex Williams, 63 years of age now. Graham Miles, 55 years of age. Our referee, John Newton, I think is 106. <laughs> I haven't potted one of those in 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> but he has had a week's practice. Graham Miles uh, left the professional circuit about six years ago. Although uh, he was something of a part-timer for several years before that. His great days were the early 70s. Four. Today he's a very successful club owner. Can I stop now while I'm in front? <laughs> and a great character, he really is. I know that winning Pot Black made an enormous difference Nine. to the number of professional uh, exhibition engagements he was able to obtain. Ten. And in those days, of course, that was how professionals made the bulk of their living. Graham Miles, ten. I tried to play safe there, Rex. I thought you were going well for a moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just as lucky as ever. One. <laughs> I'm pleased you appreciated that. <laughs> Rex, is there one of the original eight of Pot Black back in 1969?
Yes, he's not played uh, the snooker circuit for a year or two, but he's still playing an extremely useful game of billiards, just outside the world's top ten, having been world champion several times. Somebody moved the pocket that time. I think that uh, with all the players who are not in regular practice on the snooker circuit, they're all still pretty good close in, but uh, give them a bit of distance and uh, you soon uh, see some difficulties. Graham is so laid back, it was always said that it'd be too late for his own funeral. Yeah. It hasn't got any easier this game, has it? Yes, played for pink there because that would have given him easier access to his next red. Rex, of course, is very uh, much uh, involved Six. still in the game itself for 13 years, uh, something like 13 years. He was chairman of the Players Association. Nice plant here. Seven. Could have done with screwing back another couple of inches rather than have to bridge awkwardly like this. Rex Williams, seven. So a somewhat scrappy start. One. Six. There's the original pop black trophy, which uh, was designed, in fact, by Birmingham University. They had a competition, and that was the winning design. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Carl. <laughs> ML6. Lex Williams, four. Well, the intended red uh, didn't drop in. But the cue ball <coughs> did. One. He looks as though he's fond of gardening. He keeps getting these plants. Now, there's the new trophy, the new Pop Black trophy, the Henson Investors trophy.
Max Williams, six. You get your hands warmer, clapping the shots that we miss as opposed to the ones that you get. <laughs> well, it is a bit of a struggle so far. Their miles six. <coughs> Referee John Newton came to life there. I think that uh, Rex Williams's cue just grazed the red next to the cue ball. And that's what they call a cross face double. Played to perfection by Graham there. That wasn't. <laughs> I deserve that, really. <laughs> Rex and his wife, Rita. Travel the world, enjoying life these days. This will be a good game for anyone left to see the end of it. <laughs> Why to the mark? Yes, and I think that. Uh, on an occasion like this, once you've missed a couple, then you can uh, see yourself missing more or less anything. Whatever bit of confidence you may have built up in practice soon goes if you start to miss them when it counts. Uh, develop the black into a better position. Well, only a safety intended there, but uh, that's not safe. No, this is a chance for Graham, actually. One. Some uh, loose shreds in the centre of the table there. Graham, away from the table, uh, wears spectacles these days, but uh, as soon as he gets down to his game, he leaves them alone, and there's one of the Six. answers to that. Well, that was a good recovery. And uh, seven. with a couple more reds in the middle of the table, Another couple of blues with those reds. Shouldn't be beyond him. Twelve. And Rex sits there seeing the match disappear from him. Thirteen.
program. Mars, of course, has so many happy memories of Pop Black having won it two years running, 74 and 75. 18. Nineteen. So just this blue and the remaining red would leave Williams needing snookers. Twenty-four. <laughs> that was Everyone the one he wanted. <laughs> yes, it was just a little bit tricky. Key ball and red close together, not easy to judge the angle. Williams couldn't get through to the potting angle on that red. But uh, that's a good safety. Is he allowed to do that, Riff? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance for Rex. Now he's 33 points behind, and there's a possible 35 points there. One. Under hit it. Didn't want to leave such a thin cut on this black. He might miss it, and position on the yellow isn't guaranteed from it. Overcut it. Max Williams, one. So, it looks as if uh, Graham Miles is going to prevail in this first round encounter. Two. Foul. What of a foul? Yes, hit the green one. Hit the green on the right side. Sorry, the bell on the right side. Rex Williams, four. Graham Miles, two. The difference is 30 points, and there's only 25 points there. Three. <laughs> Rex Williams. Attempting to lay the snooker behind the pink. <laughs> oh, terrific double. He's thoroughly enjoying this senior part like his Graham Miles. Lovely character. Now lives in Walsall. He and his wife, uh, Heather, who's with him on this particular trip into the heart of Sussex. Nine. And the audience thoroughly enjoying it along with Graham. Fifteen. So Graham Miles finishes with a flourish. He beats his uh, old adversary Rex Williams, whom he also beat to reach the 1974 <laughs> World <laughs> Final. <laughs> Graham Miles goes through to the quarter-finals. The game was a scrappy game, but when the black got uh, pushed up to the uh, bulk end of the table and the balls got tied up, we were both trying to get the balls open at that stage just to sort of... Uh, so that we could uh, knock a few balls in. Unfortunately, Graham was the one who got in and knocked the balls in. Yeah, we decided to play a sort of fairly open game, um, you know, without too much sort of safety stuff, and uh, I got in the early stages and... Um, of course, when the Rex is making mention about the black going safe, I had a smash at it to try and open the reds up. But uh, Rex's problem during the first half of the game, he was playing with the butt end of his cue, you see. <laughs> now, I, it, it, and I didn't realise, and when, uh, at the end, when I needed, I think it was a snook, one snook at the end, but I didn't realise that, uh, and I didn't see the foul that Graham uh, made when he was called a foul. I don't think you realised no, what No, I don't know. Well, happened, I still don't know. But I didn't realise when I potted the green that until someone mentioned it to me um, after the game that uh, I had a free ball. So, 
uh, had I known it was a free ball, I would have potted the black and, and then cleared the table and I would have won on the black. It would have been a yeah, different result. That's right, eh? that's right. You see, yeah. wouldn't it, uh, Graham? You could have played, yeah, you could have. We can go back and play it now, Rex. We can go back and replay it. Um, <laughs> set the balls back up and, uh, and have a go. Do you know, somehow I don't think we've got the time. In the quarterfinals of the seniors, Graham faces another of his old friends and rivals, Cliff Thorburn. And as for Graham, he's enjoying again the days of 74. Let's meet the players, and first of all, Graham Miles. John Spencer. Well, that's almost it for this one. Tomorrow we have a guest who's travelled a very long way and never fails to remind you that he made the highest ever break in the old Pop Black series. The Australian master, Eddie Charlton. And with Eddie, there's always a story. In getting my uh, suitcase out of the car, I twisted my back and, oh, the pain was dreadful. The following day when he had to play, he was still in a lot of pain. So we sent for a doctor, and uh, along came the doctor and gave him an ejection in, in uh, uh, the sit me down, as it were. John Spencer walked past my dressing room um, open doorway, and he spotted me for the first time. And I was playing John that day, you see. And John said, oh, there's Eddie. Oh, and I was bent over. And Eddie uh, struggled to the table, and Cleared, uh, the, cleared out with a beautiful break of 110, which still today is the highest break ever made in Pop Black. Right?